As Murray has kindly let you know, I'm Karen Brock, a 2014 scholar. And the topic that I was chose to investigate was the use of molecular markers in the berry fruit industry. This topic was sponsored by Horticulture Innovation Australia, who has been very generous with their advice. And I can only hope that in the future that my findings can actually assist the industry with improved management of, of pra management practices of plant material. Nuffield Australia, of course, I think we're all aware, both inside and outside of this room, of the incredible network which Nuffield allows us to investigate. And as said in many cases prior, Nuffield is definitely a life-changing experience. My husband had the rough end of the Nuffield experience. He not only had to manage my role of learning to deal with humanity's evil creation called computers, but he had to learn to cook for himself as well. I would have done Nuffield 20 years ago had I known that this would be the outcome. I've also had an incredible um, group of people, there's only 51 of the most amazing people that went out of their way to set up interviews, assist with information, and fitted me into some incredibly busy schedules with hands-on experience, sending me relevant papers to assist me with, with my topic. My husband and I, and this picture is taken before Nuffield, by the way, there's not as many grey hairs, operate, uh, op operate an ornamental nursery finishing plants for Bunnings. We also operate a propagation nursery for ornamental plants. We do seed research for the citrus industry. And more recently, we, we diversed into a tissue culture laboratory which does raspberry, blueberry and cherry production for rootstocks. The topics, molecular topics studied included DNA extraction. And one of the greatest things to experience was getting to New Zealand where Dr Mary Christie of Plant Food Research went out of her way to give me a hands-on experience of extracting DNA from plants and explaining to me the relevance to the berry industry. I also was able to visit, it, visit out of the 13 teams that worked on the Human Genome Project, four of those teams. And it was interesting to find that the technology that's being developed for human research through pharmaceutical funding is actually financing the way, or paving the way, for plant research. So in effect, plant research is about three steps behind human research due to lag of information distribution, to the uptake of ideas, and how to convert into an applied plant experiment. Germplasm storage and management was a really interesting topic. And one of the key points here was to investigate whether genetics actually change with the various formats of genetic storage. And these go from many formats, from the traditional plantings in the field and in greenhouses, through tissue culture with slow growth storage facilities, like the one on your screen, or cryopreserved and frozen at 196, minus 196 degrees centigrade. This particular germplasm storage facility was fascinating. It was actually funded by 38 farmers in France who formed a cooperative just to, put, just to preserve 23 strains of germplasm in their province. Molecular uses in breeding programs. I actually stirred up a real hornet's nest with this investigation because I'd never come across such polarised debate in all my life. The traditional growers were happy to just grow plants on wide footprints of land and not worry about molecular breeding. Simplistically, I found that the fruit and ornamental breeders were afraid to discard plants in case something magic appeared in their selections. A totally different story with vegetable, fodder and cereal production, that they were very clearly focused on what traits that they required and were only too happy to discard any plants that didn't match what they, re what they needed. The exception with fruit was in Spain, where El Instituto Valenciano de Investigaciones Agrias, otherwise known as IVIA, tested 40,000 citrus seedlings per year for two gene markers. As a result of investigating the molecular uses in breeding, I came across embryo rescue in tissue culture. This was the light bulb moment. What's happening is breeders who investigate molecular techniques in their programs 
are now cross-pollinating plants that don't normally survive in nature. They will actually pollinate in nature, but usually the ovaries are bought prior to its onset of seed development. Using rescue techniques, breeders are now achieving plants that can survive with the human intervention and develop with correct nutrition and plant hormones. When the variety of peaches, apples, citrus, pears, blueberries and raspberries resulting from this is absolutely unbelievable because we are seeing plants that have never been seen before in, in programs that are resistant to diseases, have developed allelopathic traits, which means aphids are not attracted to them and therefore viruses are not spread. There are many issues concerning plant health that was discussed during the molecular uh, investigation because over the years there's been issues with true to type plants. And this plant that I'm holding here is actually a cyclonal variant within the same bed of raspberries. And this is very, uh, could very probably be de de delivered to a propagator. Because over the years, plants have been delivered by a, a vast a variety of mechanisms. Farmers delivered them for propagation, mutations occur during seed or tissue culture, and then as a result, propagators can be sued for having the wrong plants because mutations usually do not perform very well. It was also discovered when I visited Oregon State University, Nala Basil had tested the 63 blueberry plants that was in their paddock and a replica in their screened greenhouse to find that 13 were incorrectly labelled. Four were obvious label swaps. The other nine she is having to trace with molecular markers to see what the parents are. Nuclear stock programs also was investigated and the, it was quite clear from very early on that nuclear stock programs and germplasm management was quite an issue around the world. This spot here is Michael Dossett at Agassi in Canada where Ag Canada actually canned all breeding programs in every facet of agriculture. And Oregon State University and Washington State University were so concerned about the loss of germplasm with this blueberry breeding program, they offered to fund the Ag Canada um, program. <clears throat> they all share an equal royalty if there is a commercial reality from this program. The other one was New York James Hutton Institute in Scotland, Dundee, and also the Oregon State University that had excellent germplasm repositories. Up until then, I was finding that germplasm was really quite sparse and they're only just starting to realise that there may be an issue. Which leads into the protection of germplasm. Because one of the issues that's come out is that um, germplasm is being lost. We're actually finding 117 prunus species, which is your almonds and, um, almonds and cherries across Europe, have been lost in the last 10 years due to orchard neglect. And what they do have left actually has been left with viruses and there's actually quite a bit to clean up. And they're using technology such as thermotherapy to heat treat these plants and then using cryopreservation to preserve them. Also of concern in the raspberry industry is genetic drift. The rubus species is very prone to genetic drift, whether it be in the field or with tissue culture. And as a result, fruit yields, plant health, and general performance can diminish over the lifetime of a variety. One of the resultant issues can have a huge economic impact on farmers, and that is that the crops do not fruit at all, they do not fruit on the time frame required, or they have misshapen fruit, which burst into balls and is commonly known as crum crumbly fruit. And tissue culture in the past has been blamed as one of the key criminals of causing this. And the key issue of this topic was to actually investigate, can I use a molecular marker or molecular technique to see if this can be identified? The answer is genetic drift can be identified using a single nucleotide protein test. However, at present, that's actually quite expensive. Can the crumbly fruit be identified? The answer is not at this stage. 
Crumbly fruit is as a result of three things. There are three viruses that reside in the plant. The plant has to be predisposed genetically. And also there is environmental impact on whether that plant develops crumbly fruit. And we are look, the James Hutton Institute is looking at all stages to see if this, how this happens. One interesting fact was one mother plant from a selection, of which they divided into five, two produced crumbly fruit, three didn't. And yet their environment was the same and their genetics were the same. So there is a lot, probably five to ten years before we get an answer to this question. The impacts on the business thus far has been DNA testing of all mother plants. This is something that will be an absolute requirement for any plant entering the Brooklands property. And it will also be in addition to our biosecure hazard processes, we identify plants that are already on the property and the pathogen that, that are in them. This will be achieved by collating the material and sending to the relevant breeders or germplasm repositories. The process will also enable us to develop a certificate of authenticity as the plants leave the property. As a bit of a mistake, I came across a paper that has not been published yet, and that was overcoming seed dormancy. This means that we, our blackberry seeds that are coming through for a large client can now be released to the client in November instead of March. And this is because the normal stratification period has been totally obliterated. So I can now get seed germinating within 14 days instead of 120 days. I also came across a process in Italy, Spain and Germany where they are micro-grafting in tissue culture, particularly with citrus, cherry, apples, pears and avocados and grapes. I got quite excited on this and we've already started on citrus program followed by a cherry program and we can actually remove in the cherry plant two years of growth before he actually gets the plants. We can actually remove two years of growth by getting the plants to the paddock earlier. A little bit of a technical hitch up there. At the Samuel Roberts Noble Foundation, I spied some GMO ryegrass being deflasked under these lids. And we have some issues with light intensity deflasking in winter. So I had a little bit of money for my get out of jail money, which I purchased the lids and sent them home to see if that was going to work. And the answer was an affirmative and the troops are already demanding more of them. The effect now is that my clients will now receive their strawberries in October instead of November. So I've basically taken four weeks off the normal growing time. There's going to be impacts upon the industry and that is Queensland recently enacted legislation which is closely being followed by Tasmania, New South Wales, Victoria and Western Australia where a farmer, propagator or contractor is now liable for any damage that may be caused to another farm due to the mishandling of plant material. This is quite radical as used previously by security laws only applied to exotic pests, pathogens or diseases. Which leads into the next impact, which is the farmer awareness of supply chain process. It is very common for plants to arrive without inspection, no certification apart from previous mentioned schemes, and usually no checking. And we tightly rely on agents to have done due diligence, but never ask if that has actually occurred. Traceability can be dubious to say the least. And molecular techniques for testing exactly what pathogens are in plants and exactly what plants we have on our properties, is already, that technology is already in Australia. But more importantly, I've discovered test kits being developed so that on-the-ground testing of DNA can occur with photos being sent to relevant scientists via email. This technology is about five to eight years away, and that change will also quickly identify how plants enter the, prop enter the property or are handled whilst on the property. One of the things I found that unlike the ornamental in industry, accreditation schemes were not readily applicable or apply applied to quite a few of the agricultural industries here. Strawberries, potatoes and citrus had certainly addressed problems with systems of plant management, but on the whole, it's an absolute dog's breakfast when it comes to sourcing plant material and handling plant material. 
setting up a plant management plan by incorporating testing and traceability in the berry industry will be one of the key factors with continuous of this study at an industry level. The need to monitor drift with mother plant material is, and seriously developing a list of pathogens to be monitored is to be continued. As a country, we also have issues with germplasm, the cost of germplasm entering it due to quarantine and, and the numbers of plants that we can enter. It's, it is imperative that care to be take, it is to be taken to be look after this material. Too often, agents focus on how to commercially release the material. Breeding programs are near non-existent. And there is a grave concern that only one or two companies will eventually corner the market in Australia and growers will be at mercy for their price. But this model is also being looked at in Europe as they're quite concerned that there's only two companies representing all the fruits being marketed around Europe. In summary, in my quest in search of technologies to identify the gene markers using polymerase chain reaction, I found thermocycling machinery and software quite cheap and kits readily available, complete with step-by-step -step instructions. The application to the industry is growing at a rate faster than there are qualified people to use or read the results of PCR. My focus, which was particularly on molecular techniques in identifying plant cultivars or genetic drift, expanded like an accordion player once my project took shape. I found the answers, and yet I found quite a few unanswerable, particularly those involved with patents where in this day and age, plant DNA is not recognised legally. Again, a much gratitude to all the people involved to enable this study to occur.